because injury rates remain enormously high in runners raises plenty of questions about the effectiveness of cushion-heeled traditional running shoes in their capacity to effectively minimize injurious impact levels during running. We know that the traditional running shoe, most of these shoes are very rigid and inflexible in structure. Most traditional running shoes also have a very narrow toe box which may be a big threat to balance stability during running and may weaken proper impact absorption in the foot because the toes are very compressed and squished together in these types of running shoes. The toes are unable to spread out during the stance phase of running whereby full toe splay is the foot's natural duty in helping reinforce better balance control during running and walking making running in traditional running shoes a very risky prospect since your toes may be disengaged in their contribution to provide added balance support during running and walking. Nonetheless, traditional or conventional running shoes most certainly change the shape of our feet for the negative. These shoes systematically repress natural foot function and therefore can make it more difficult to achieve proper, normal, sustainable foot health function and strength. But the health harming effects of cushion stiff traditional running shoes extend way beyond potentially physically crippling the feet. What is equally problematic about most conventional traditional running shoes is that they may amplify global mechanical challenges during running because the thick cushioning represses an essential element that has been mechanically linked to improving running form, and that is sensory feedback at the feet. In traditional running shoes, much of the mechanical offsets and the mechanical challenges associated with these shoes are due to a reduction in ground feel or sensory stimulation on the bottoms of the bare foot to which sensory feedback is always optimized when you're barefoot. And it's the kind of sensory repression from thick underfoot padding that may be very deeply involved in causing many running related injuries. Researchers have already identified that in thick cushion running shoes, the feet are unable to receive clear sensory input or sensory feedback messages that are essential to helping guide a safe light forefoot strike landing pattern during running with increasing reflexive precision. The infusion of sensory feedback at the feet is always optimized, like I said, when you're barefoot and is what helps you move smoothly during running with minimal mechanical overload. Not only that, when it comes to impact reduction, running barefoot or at least running in barefoot inspired running shoes appears to work best for prompting a much less impact intensive foot strike that is reflexively driven to naturally help initiate a less forceful engagement between the foot and the ground during barefoot running. It's important to make clear right away that just because a running shoe has very thick underfoot padding, padding thickness or excessive cushioning does not entirely shield the body from impact if you run with a forceful heel strike landing. Whereas if you run with a forefoot strike landing, the mechanical uniqueness of forefoot running has a strong association with significantly less impact production as compared to heel strike running. And I posted a link in the description box down below of a video demonstrating the proper forefoot strike landing pattern. This is why we see a dramatic shift in injury rates among forefoot runners. Now in contrast, heel strike running really amplifies impact most often beyond a tolerable limit of the muscles and bones, often resulting in a repetitive stress injury, making running shoes in this case useless because when it comes to heel strike running, the high force magnitude produced at heel strike during heel strike running simply creates waves of impact that ripple through the foot, up the leg, up the body, despite wearing thick padded running shoes. And it's this impact ripple effect spurred by heel strike running that has a long history of causing many common running related injury. This all ties into a very eye-opening study, which is also linked down below in the description box, 
The study published in the journal Sports Medicine makes the case as to why cushioned running shoes aren't always the best solution to reduce impact forces during heel strike running. The study fundamentally addressed why cushioned heel traditional running shoes have a strong influence in causing many running related injuries, not preventing them. The researchers demonstrated that most of the injury related problems runners face, aside from heel strike running, is most likely due to the inadequacy of cushion heeled running shoes and their poor capacity to effectively soak up much of the high impact magnitude of heel strike running. And because even the most cushioned running shoes are unable to absorb and deflect impact in full measure in a heel strike running style, most traditional running shoes may very well help drive runners deeper into running injuries. And this is largely due to inadequate material testing on these types of running shoes, which does not make traditional running shoes legitimately safe if the material tests done on these types of shoes aren't satisfactory in their capacity to ensure that these particular shoes are well equipped in their structural capacity to fully absorb impact in heel strike running. Basically, the main take home message from this video is that the study impressively concluded that the provability of the efficacy of traditional running shoes in their capacity to reduce impact during running and thus try to prevent impact related injury is tremendously lacking. The study pretty much concluded that it's clear that cushion heeled traditional running shoes may be a true source of injury due to inadequate material tests on the shoe before the shoe is put out there on the market. Therefore, how can conventional traditional running shoes be marketed as safe for runners if the material tests on these shoes are not really sufficient enough to deem the shoe safe for running? The researchers describe that before the conventional running shoe is put on the market, the underheel portion of the running shoe undergoes a series of material tests to determine the absorbency capacity of the underheel cushioning. From here, the shoe manufacturers test how well their running shoes can handle the impact of running, particularly the impact of heel strike running, which again is the most common running form among most joggers. It is also a very high impact form of running, hence the need for thick underheel cushioning. In the study, the researchers detailed two well-known specific types of material tests that conventional running shoes undergo to determine the absorbency efficacy of the underfoot and underheel padding. The first test is called the dynamic test, which is essentially the most commonly used material test on running shoe cushioning. The dynamic test involves simulating the specific impact variables produced in a heel strike landing running style in which a heel strike landing is replicated by dropping a weight with a shock absorbency inferred via the height of the rebound of this weight. Now the second material test performed on the underfoot material of a running shoe is called the static test, which involves the measurement of shock absorption based on the depth of deformation caused by the object with a standardized mass and shape. Now shoe companies use these tests to infer how strongly durable and impact protecting their running shoes are for running in general, so the shoe can be marketed as safe for running. This is how shoe companies gain the foothold to sell under the misleading premise that more cushioning means more impact protection and therefore less chance of getting injured if you run in their particular running shoe. The researchers in the study, however, impressively determined that these two types of material tests are completely inappropriate because these material tests do not truly, genuinely, and accurately reflect or mimic the high impact conditions of heel strike running. And we see evidence of this because the injury rates are too high in runners who wear thickly cushioned running shoes. Now, there are of course many 
principal reasons for running injuries, but clearly the high injury rates incurred by most shod runners is a very clear indicator that cushioned running shoes certainly uh, do not help catalyze injury-free running and may not be essential for bringing relief from injury. The researchers found that these types of material tests on under heel cushioning of traditional running shoes does not accurately predict the actual heel strike shock impact during heel strike running and that the material tests on most modern traditional thickly cushioned running shoes do not account for the natural shock moderating behavior of a runner who runs with a heel strike landing pattern. This all means that material tests done on thick under heel cushioning of the traditional running shoe does not entirely reflect the actual landing behavior, nor does it reflect the impact force magnitude of a heel strike runner. And to reassert this data, again, just look at the statistics. Most heel strike runners who run in thickly cushioned traditional running shoes get injured. And the numbers continue to grow in terms of injury. Therefore, most traditional running shoes on the market certainly don't do a good job at preventing impact related injuries in runners because the material tests do not fully match the impact production in a heel strike runner. The results from the study mirrors findings from another study which found that impact at heel strike during heel strike running did not reduce after the amount of under heel cushioning doubled in a series of running shoes that varied in midsole hardness. This again means that additional underfoot cushioning in a running shoe does not necessarily shrink a heel strike runner's risk of injury. Rather, thicker underfoot padding may expand the risk of getting a running related injury as thicker underfoot cushioning, particularly under the heel, really seems to cause a runner or heel strike runner to strike the ground harder. Thereby, impact may be more amplified when you run in traditional running shoes. Thus, it is becoming clear that the material tests on traditional running shoes with thick cushioning are very inefficient and we are seeing the results which are essentially injured heel strike runners and that outdated science is potentially being used to study the effects of shoe cushioning on impact reduction in heel strike runners. Based on the inadequate material test, very little is being done in terms of advancing running shoe technology that actually meets the needs of a heel strike runner and also these two types of material tests most likely achieve very little to bring about the changes that are so necessary to make running shoes safer for heel strike runners. Therefore, this data really reasserts that cushion traditional running shoes may be a good source of injury as most material tests done on these types of running shoes done on the traditional running shoe does not ensure that the running shoes being tested deliver impact protection results for runners. So what do runners do in efforts to try to run with less impact aside from relying on a shoe, which doesn't seem to go over very well. To take the best route toward low impact running, your best bet is to adopt a four foot strike running style via barefoot running or running in minimalistic running shoes because it's because in forefoot running you make less forceful motions with your foot and your leg forefoot running is now being more fully recognized as the best answer to less injury as based on emerging scientific evidence as well as anecdotal reports that forefoot running especially when barefoot because your landing behaviors are more positively affected by the sensory awareness when you run barefoot or at least when you run in barefoot like running shoes when you run barefoot doing so really gives you the new capacity to regain better motor control and most importantly a safer lighter more responsive foot strike usually in the form of a forefoot strike landing configuration not a heel strike landing and this is because when you run barefoot, you operate from a better position to fully use the sensory cues penetrating the soles on the bare foot to create your own adaptive cushioned footfall because barefoot running makes it easier and more helpful for you to effectively discriminate between landing on your heel, 
which equates to greater impact or landing on your forefoot, which equates to less impact. This is why I like to say that barefoot running is largely responsible for most of the mechanical smartness that involves adaptive responses that naturally aid in decreased landing impact. The major point most people miss is that running barefoot with a forefoot strike landing pattern does not produce any more impact than running in cushioned running shoes as one of the proven defining characteristics of running barefoot is an adaptively driven lighter foot strike intensity which is driven by a sensory feedback loop naturally formed between the feet and the brain which enables the barefoot runner to move toward some kind of easing from impact that is lacking when most runners run in cushioned traditional running shoes. Again, this is why barefoot runners tend to run very different stylistically than most shod runners because the quality level of sensory feedback is the best tool yet for learning to pursue a dramatically less forceful foot strike striking the ground towards the front of your foot just ahead of the arch in reaction or in compensation for the lack of underfoot cushioning. This is all due to the fact that lighter, less force intensive foot strike mechanics is very sensory driven and sensory influence and the existence of sensory input stimulating and awakening the bottom of the bare foot tends to fade away with increased underfoot cushioning and it's the thick cushioning in most traditional running shoes that un unfortunately lifts your foot strike intensity awareness in which we see the biggest declines in good safe running mechanics in traditional running shoes. It's no doubt that most traditional running shoes may play a role in a runner's susceptibility to injury even with all the sophisticated developments in running shoe technology, it really is the sensory repressiveness at the feet that may undermine a runner's ability to effectively land less forcibly. When you run barefoot, you actually have more freedom to control your forefoot strike mechanics and most importantly, your forefoot strike intensity since the sensory input that kicks in when you run barefoot positively reinforces reflexive responsive actions in the legs and in the feet that helps you cultivate a safer mechanical engagement of your foot with the ground. Essentially, running doesn't have to be a labor intensive or an injurious thing. What matters so much is based on the evidence that refutes the safeness of cushioned, heeled, conventional, traditional running shoes. This evidence has been piling up for decades to the extent that running shoes may taint good running biomechanics. And from this, traditional, conventional running shoes are being considered a potential disadvantage that may perpetuate insufficient, unsafe biomechanics potentially offering more challenges than solving them. Given the inexcusable high injury rates among shod joggers, which seems to be always on the rise, statistically speaking and paying attention to the trend lines, it appears as if traditional running shoes may be an injury magnet. Knowing this data alone reinforces the idea that learning good biomechanics through barefoot running, since you have more concentrated sensory power gives you a better pulse to safely harmonize your biomechanics. Your forefoot strike mechanics are fully under control when you run barefoot, helping you put an end to erratic, forceful, painful footfalls and hopefully injury. For more information regarding the health benefits of barefoot running and the performance benefits of barefoot running, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.